Hi everybody! Today we're going to have a look at pitch in phonology. So what is pitch? Pitch describes the highness or lowness of our voice. Here is an example. We're going to use the word hello. First I'm going to increase my pitch. Hello, 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 hello. And now I'm going to decrease my pitch. Hello, 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 hello. So this was a variation in pitch, probably ranging from around 165 to 255 hertz. Why is pitch important? Now we use pitch, or better, a change in pitch, in intonation to express meaning and attitude. For example, hi or hi. Here I sound happy in the first high with a higher pitch, but unhappy in the second high with a lower pitch. A variation in pitch can tell us about the personal characteristics of the speaker. For example, their gender, age, and emotional status. So, if, for example, the voice of a child is higher and has a higher pitch than that of a woman or a man. Also, vocal cords become thinner as we get older, and that can change the pitch of our voice as well. Now, Pitch is also important because it tells us something about the boundary of tone units. If that is a new thing for you and you don't know what tone units are, don't worry, check out my other video where I explain all about them. I'll link to it in the description box below. In English, a higher pitch is used for informational contrast. For example, in contrastive stress, or to emphasize something. For example, I wanted him to call me. We stressed him, but there was also a higher pitch on him, making sure you hear that this was important information. Here is a fun fact for you. In tonal languages, for example Chinese, Mandarin Chinese to be precise, a change in pitch can change the meaning of a word. For example, in the word ma. Now, I don't speak Chinese and I'm not going to pretend to know how to pronounce these different variations, but you can see with the little accent on top of the vowel A that there are different tones, really different pitch patterns for each of the words and they change the meaning of the word ma. Now in English we don't do that, that would be a lot more complicated, so if you thought English was complicated, have a look at this. I think that makes it a lot more complicated and challenging to learn a language. Now let's have a look in detail at what pitch really is. What exactly is it? Now first of all here's a definition. Pitch is really the number of vibrations per second produced by our vocal cords. Remember, we can find those in our throat. But just in case you've forgotten, here is a diagram. You can see the vocal cords in the diagram situated here just above our windpipe. And next to the diagram to the right, you can see a view of the vocal cords from on top what they look like first in their closed form and then also in their opened form. Now when we speak, the vocal cords, they come together and they vibrate to produce sounds. Sometimes they close completely, but often they just come together and they start vibrating to produce sound that we then mold with the rest of our articulators. The rest of the time when you don't speak, the vocal cords are relaxed and in an open position so that you can breathe because like you can see, the windpipe is just underneath the vocal cords. Now 
pitch is set on a scale from low to high. High pitch means a higher frequency of vibrations. And then obviously a low pitch means a lower frequency of vibrations. And those vibrations are always measured in hertz. And the abbreviation is HZ. And I think you've probably seen this before. Here is an illustration of what that might look like. So we've got two sounds, one with a high pitch, that's the blue one on top. And so a high pitch means high frequency. And you can see this, this would be from a higher tone. And then underneath you have a low frequency of a lower tone in red. But here is another diagram to make this even clearer. So within the same time frame, maybe a second, we would have fewer waves for a low pitch, but a lot more for a higher pitch. And those are really showing the vibrations of the vocal cords. So pitch, like I said, is set on a scale from low to high. And when a sound goes up in frequency, it also goes up in pitch. And our ear hears it as higher. That's how we perceive it. So pitch variation is caused, how do we actually manage to make our vocal cords vibrate more? Now this is done through um, stretching and tensing of the vocal cords. So you can see them again and when they're stretched and they're tense, that means that there's a higher pitch, a higher number of vibrations. And there's also the air pressure that will change. A change in air pressure below the vocal cords is involved. And in general, we could say a higher pressure produces a higher pitch, so a higher frequency of vibrations. So if you have a really high, high tone, that means uh, the vocal cords are tense and stretched and there's higher air pressure. And actually when you sing and you try and produce a high note, I feel you can feel that your vocal cords are more tense and that you have you need more pressure, more air pressure to produce that high note. Just try it out yourself and I think you'll feel it. Now, you might be asking, are pitch and volume amplitude the same? And the answer is no, don't get them confused. Volume is about how loud or quiet a sound is, but pitch is about how high or low that sound is. So those are very different things. Don't mix them up. So volume we measure in decibels and it's dB, the abbreviation, but pitch is about frequency and that's measured in hertz. And to illustrate the difference between the two things, again, here is a diagram. So in the above diagram A, you can see a quieter and a louder sound. And the quieter one, the wave is a lot smaller, it's not as large. And in the louder sound, the wave is larger, it has a, a greater size. So you could remember volume amplitude is how large the wave is. But pitch, the frequency, that's about how many waves there are in a given time. So we have a lower pitch, there are only a few waves, and a high pitch with a lot of waves. In our example in B, the lower pitch is also quieter, and the higher pitch would also be louder because the waves are also different in size. So the frequency of vibration of the vocal cords depends on several things. Number one, their thickness. Number two, their length. And number three, their tension. And together they really form the size of the vocal cords. And they're unique for every person, which is why each one of us has a unique voice. Now, men have thicker and longer vocal cords than women and children, which is why their pitch range is different to women and definitely different to that of children. So 
Our normal speaking voice would be our modal pitch. Modal pitch is the normal pitch a person usually speaks in, in a neutral manner without any great emotions. And the pitch range for every person is different. Every voice has a unique pitch range, but it does also depend on the gender and also age. So the pitch range, sometimes also called the frequency range, for a typical adult man, they, they would have a pitch range of around 85 to 155 hertz. And the typical adult woman from 165 to 255 hertz. So you can see on average, the voice of a woman is a lot higher than that of a man. And now a child, a typical child has a pitch range from 250 to 400 hertz. So a lot higher. So those voices really, they differ in pitch depending on gender and also age. Now within this pitch range, so for example from 165 to 255, that would be that of a typical woman, a person can speak in a high, mid and low voice. And the mid voice is the normal modal pitch. So I've just been speaking to you in my modal pitch range. So you might have thought about vocal range. We're talking so much about pitch and you think, mm, isn't that what we t sometimes talk about when we talk about the range of a singer? That is the vocal range. So when we talk about music and singing, we don't really use the word pitch range, but vocal range. And so this is the range of pitch that a human voice can sing in. And we wouldn't use um, the measurements hertz here, those are given in octaves and I'm sure you've heard this before um, and here is another fan fact for you so the American singer Tim Storms he has the widest pitch range 10 octaves now that's a lot because he can produce the lowest note that we have on record he set a Guinness world record and the lowest note that he produced was recorded at 0.189 hertz. That's so low that only elephants can hear it. The human ear can't even hear it. So he can't sing that high. He has a wide range because he can produce such a low tone. And if you want to hear him sing in a really low, deep voice, check it out on YouTube. It's quite fun to listen to. Now, if you want to hear the opposite, a really high note with high pitch, Listen to the song Butterfly by Mariah Carey. She can hit some incredibly high notes. I don't know exactly their pitch <laughs> in Hertz, but it's pretty, pretty high. So check it out. I'll link to both of the videos in the description box. So do you have any more questions about pitch or pronunciation in general? Please leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you.